What are the feelings in relationship? Then we have to understand each of these feelings and ensure that these feelings are there in us, in me. <coughs> if, if I do understand the relationship, understand the feelings in relationship, understand the details of these feelings, and I ensure that each of these feelings is there in me. Then I will be able to ensure fulfillment in relationship. Then what we normally call as understanding in relationship will be a part of it. For example, yesterday we talked about understanding of relationship and understanding of feeling of relationship. Right? And one of them we discuss in detail like trust. Now you can see, if you understand the trust properly, trust and intention and the communication, then what will happen? You will have trust and intention of everyone. Because basically this 3 and 4 is just the reflection of 1 and 2. 1 and 2, look from the other side, will with 3 and 4. So every one of you, this 100 people, when you are, you know, verifying it for yourself, 1A and 2A is 2. Now if I look at it from my side, that will mean 3 and 4A. So at least about 100 people I can be sure that they want to, you know, be happy and make others happy. That is their natural acceptance. So therefore, I think uh, that if there is four A, we put a portion mark because it is three actually. Because that's the whole thing. No? That's the whole point. In fact, <coughs> the major issue which is concerning relationship is the feeling of trust, and the major issue which is concerning this feeling of trust is this question mark here in 4A, right? And finally it has to, you know, become a tick mark. Essentially the total, you know, effort that is required 
is here. <coughs> this question mark going to the tick mark. This is the crack. And it will make all the difference. will make all the difference because when you have trust on intention, this one is going to take place. You will try to improve the competence of the other. It is lacking the competence. And this I can see for everyone. Everyone wants to be happy and wants to make others happy. That is his natural acceptance. That is his intention. Therefore, I can have trust on intention of everybody. If I have a trust on intention of everybody and I find that he is doing something otherwise making me unhappy, is it a matter of competence or intention? Competence. Then what will I do? I will try to improve his competence or I will have this feeling of irritation, anger, opposition. So what will happen is that if I have the understanding of relationship, then all this will automatically come, what we call as understanding in relationship. So I am able to understand the other person. I am willing to, you know, take him for whatever competence he has. Not only that, I will accept him with whatever competence he has. I will even try to improve his competence. I will also try to improve my competence because it is possible that I do not have the competence mm -hmm. and that is creating problem in the relationship. Most of the time we think that we have the competence, the other is creating problem. It is likely that we also do not have the competence. So we must, you know, <coughs> evaluate our competence. <coughs> we must evaluate the competence of the other. And if we are lacking the competence, we must improve that. If the other is lacking competence, we must help him to improve his competence. So that understanding in relationship is born out of understanding of relationship. And there, not only that I tolerate the other, right? I am responsible for the other. If the other is not doing things properly, <laughs> not ensuring this mutual fulfillment, then not only that I will not react to it, not only that I will not, you know, kind of be, uh, you know, kind of unhappy about it, I will be responsible towards him. So that sense of responsibility has to be there. For example, I keep you know, telling this, that in this workshop, I don't have any expectation from you in terms of your behavior. I know that you can do anything. If you don't have the right understanding, you will have your own evaluation about yourself, about the other and all that. And you will do anything that you feel like. Right? I have to be responsible. I have to make sure that whatever behavior you have, with all that, whatever your condition of mind you have, I can still communicate with him. So that responsibility lies with me, not with you. So not only that I tolerate your, you know, behavior, behavior, behavior. Despite all your behavior, I make sure that this thing is communicated to you. Whether you are physically present here or you are physically present but mentally not present here, right? With all that given, I try to make sure that this is conveyed to you. Your attention is drawn towards it. A process of self-exploration starts in you. And if there is any question, you can ask those questions. And it is my responsibility to clarify those questions. So that sense of responsibility has to be there in relationship. 
you can do anything that is there as given. Out of lack of competencies, uh, if somebody comes to me with a soft and he's about to hit me, I know he's doing that uh, out of lack of competency. I need to improve his, uh, I need to try to improve his competencies. He's about to hit me, what do I do at that Hold him by hand. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I'm not saying that you will not stop him from doing wrong. We stop him from doing wrong, like I'm managing this class, right? So if somebody is disturbing the class, I make sure that he's not able to disturb it. But then that's not the end of it. Okay. I make sure that he gets, you know, into it and he's able to look at it, understand it. So it's not that, you know, this one person starts shouting in the class or, you know, making some disturbance and I allow him to disturb. Certainly not. I make sure that the class is running in a proper manner. If somebody is disturbing the class, I stop him. But then this stopping is done with a feeling of affection. Right? Not with a feeling of opposition. With a feeling of responsibility. And if I am not doing it out of opposition, it does not create opposition in the other. Or even if it does, for a while, slowly it you know, gets repaired. <coughs> because I do not have that feeling of opposition for him. I have a feeling of responsibility. So, it gets conveyed to him. So, I keep saying that this you know, eight day workshop is a live demonstration of all these issues of relationship. And what do you think? This class is managed by relationship or by opposition? Relationship. And it can be managed hundred people you know, with all their whole lot of background here, right? Whole lot of baggage okay, are there and you can still communicate with them, you know, on such issues of importance. And if you look at the kind of thing that we are talking about, that if you don't do it with a feeling of responsibility, feeling of relationship, it will really create chaos. For example, <coughs> the very first day we said, we are living with animal consciousness. Now if you ask somebody that we are living like animals, <laughs> what will happen? Will it lead to fight or not? <laughs> But we said this and everybody is very happy about it. <laughs> huh? I would like to cite an example on animal consciousness. Uh, we have a saying in Buddhism. Uh, uh, it says uh, human when they stay together, the more they stay together, longer period than they fight. Animals the longer they stay together then they stay in harmony. So probably that could be one of the intelligence of the <laughs> animal because human fight, human have a, a innermost uh, you know desire then the, but the, not the uh, animals, they have a limited so, from that point of view, probably sometimes the animal consciousness, at least uh, it doesn't harm others, you know. So, that's one way of looking at it. Yeah, yeah. In fact, the animal living in animal consciousness is perfectly all right. The problem is with the human being living in animal consciousness. They are in order. Probably the question you asked, or you asked, I think maybe if I uh, share my uh, little experience on this from a different uh, 
angle, or maybe from the same angle, but I think uh, the, uh, Guruji is uh, speaking from a very, very deeper level, uh, probably. And that's why it is difficult for us to understand uh, so easily. Uh, when we say the relationship, the trust, we see that how the, uh, the trust is only right when uh, we understand the reality. Uh, if there is a, sorry, this is not <laughs>
How will it express to the other? It will express to the other in this field, you know, in terms of this field. Right? I will have the feeling of trust with you, and therefore I will express this feeling of trust to you. Similarly, I will have the feeling of respect, feeling of affection. All these are the expression of the fact that I am in a state of happiness. If I have the feeling otherwise, it is an expression of the fact that I am not in a state of happiness. When I am in a state of happiness, I can measure it by way of this, by looking into myself and finding out whether all these desires, thought and expectations that I have are they in line with my natural acceptance? Or they are you know, in contradiction with this natural acceptance? When I look at it in terms of the expression of this happiness with the other, this is the, these are the feelings I will have. And you can see if I have this feeling and I share this feeling with you, what will happen? Will it make you also happy or unhappy? Happy. That mutual happiness will be the result. But then it does not mean that you will also have this feeling in you and share, you know, express this feeling towards me. That will, you know, that is not necessary. Because if you don't have the understanding, the right understanding, then you will continue to have the feeling which is based on your understanding or lack of understanding. You may, may not express or may not have this feeling. But if I have this understanding, if I am in a state of happiness, I will have this feeling and I will share this feeling with you. That is the expression of my being in a state of happiness. So sometimes, like uh, today, all day I am very happy. When we get up tomorrow morning, without knowing something, it's very dull, I don't know what is the reason. So even if I try to explore why, what happened to me, no idea. Yeah. In fact, all this is going on in you. Are you aware of all this? That is the crux. There is a lot of this accumulated here and a lot of it getting affected by way of some sensation coming from outside, some sensation, some preconditioning coming from outside, right? And lot of things are happening here and we are not aware of it. Therefore, we are not aware of our mood, right? What we are saying, that slowly I have to start paying attention towards this and I have to become aware of it every moment. I must be able to see what is happening in me at this point of time, the next point of time, and then ultimately every moment. See, what is happening is that we have so much of high estimation about ourselves, what we call as ego, you know, over-evaluation. But we are not aware of our own self. Right? Now when you become aware of yourself, then you would realize what is going on in you. What is your state of being? Are you in a state of harmony? Are you in a state of contradiction? Right? What kind of things are happening here? Are they leading to happiness, unhappiness? With so much of ego with you, what are you doing? Are you making yourself happy and happy? Unhappy. But you still belong, you know, continue to have that. That's what we are doing all the time. So not understanding the real self and not even being aware of whatever is going on in the self, real or unreal, real. Right? Out of understanding or out of delusion. Okay? We are not aware what is going on here. Therefore, whole lot of things, you know, go on here and you are all the time, you know, disturbed by it and you don't know what, don't even know what is happening there. Just be watchful and you will see in this one and a half an hour, right, how many imaginations, 
are taking place. And they are taking place with your awareness or without your awareness. Try looking at it and then you will realize what is happening. So how you suddenly become very...